and welcome back to Storming Nights Spam DK build video at Storming Nights Gaming. If you like the content and the build videos I continue to push out, go ahead and slap that subscribe button so that way you can keep up to date and follow me on Twitch. Turn on those notifications so that way you can see every bit of content that I push out. Now, beginning the Spam DK with our stat sheet 21k. 22k almost HP. Magicka is at 15.6. Stamina is at 30, almost 31. Magicka recovery at 900. Health recovery at 1000. That does get a lot higher later on. Stamina recovery is at 1400. Weapon damage at full buff is at 4700. When you look at our resistances, we are at 28.8 and 25.5, 3100 crit resistance, and all points are into stamina. We are a Nord, we are running the Witch Sugar Skulls for that extra bit of health recovery on top of having Tri-Stat. We're using the Warrior Stone. I am a Werewolf, that doesn't matter too much it can help on the stam recovery side if you choose to run it on your back bar just for the extra boost but it's not important going into our skills we are running on our back bar volatile armor that is our main resistance buff and general rule of thumb is that i tell all dk's always have your spikes in your back because you get 12% more healing done. That being said, your flex spot is your cauterize, so you can run green dragon blood if you choose to. That will synergize with this build very highly. You can run protective plate. We have a lot of magicka in our pool with this build. You can run, you know, if you choose to be heavy attack heavy, you can run Molten Armaments for your team and be team support. Uh, you can run Fossilize if you choose to. Cauterize, Flames of Oblivion, you name it, you can run it. Um, in open world, I even use the Race Against Time. Or if you feel like the region isn't good enough, you can use Deep Thoughts. For our... Next skill, we are using Elude. It makes us a ton more tanky. There are a lot of AoEs to this patch, and it gives you the Major Expedition. Moving on, we mentioned the Cauterize, and we're going to go straight into Fragmented Shield. This is nothing that you're going to buff with, you know, consistently. You can keep it up, but you have the Mag Regen to keep it up. But it is really nice to combo with your Cauterize and your Vigor in real, like, high need situations. You can even slap this into a Dragon Blood and you'll still have enough mag recovery to cast your Volatile Armor and go into your front bar. Your mag recovery will be a full bar by the time you get back into your buff rotation. Our main heal, as always on all stand builds, is going to be Resolving Vigor. And seeing how there are a lot of Sorgs this patch, I've been running Spell and it really helps with those Snipe Gangs too. Flopping over, we do have Rally as our Burst Hill with the Stamina Recovery buff. We do have Noxious Breath. It's a nice Fracture and it adds that extra little bit of dot when there are multiple enemies. I like to hit it, you know, two or three times. That way I can get that nice bit of AoE damage because there is a large amount of upfront AoE damage on this. Um, our next dot is going to be Venomous Claw. This is another flex spot. You can swap your Venomous Claw over your Noxious Breath. I mean, if you really want to. But I like Venomous Claw. The extra dot pressure this patch is outstanding. Like, people can't keep up with it. And this ramps up by 20%, you know, the longer it's on. So, it's a huge amount of dot damage, and it's really cheap. Um, your next skill that you could run on this 
like say if you were running Race Against Time, use Camouflage Hunter for the extra weapon crit, and you could use it on the flank for the extra 8% uh, damage with the Minor Berserk. It does give you that little bit of extra damage from the Fighter's Guild passive, and it can reveal Night Blades out of stealth. Our main spammable is going to be D-Swing. First hit sets them off balance, second hit stuns them, third hit is a 40% snare. Our execute is executioner, as always. And our ult is another flex. This build is so flexible, like you can run whatever you want on it. Take flight, I like it because it's a good AOE burst. Yes, the cast time kind of sucks at times, but it ain't that bad. You can deal with it. Your other ult you could run would be Onslaught, or you could run Donnie. Dawnbreaker is always good. There's a large amount of werewolves and vampires this patch. so And it gives you that extra boost of weapon damage again. So, always good. Alright, on to the gear. For our food, again, the Witch Sugar Skulls. I like to use the Essence of Mobility and Tri Potions. I've been using a little more Tri Potions than Immovability Potions, though. Uh, we are running New Moon's Mace and Shield. You could run Potentates for the extra. Uh, damage reduction you know with the five percent and all that I just chose not to and keep a constant weapon damage up at all times you can keep up the resources on this new moon acolyte is our first five piece with a nerd honed weapon damage instead of disease we are running blood spawn even with the blood spawn nerf I still feel the alt gen allows for a lot of pressure, a lot of resource return, and it really helps in those defensive situations with that one-handed shield ult. And we are running Eternal Vigor. When our health dips below 50%, we get the extra 964 health recovery, and that's where I was telling you that the health recovery will shoot up by running the Sugar Skulls, and if you really wanted to, and you wanted to be a support build, you can run Troll King and stack into that health recovery health recovery. Um, when we are above 50% health, we are going to have 321 stamina and magicka recovery at all times. On our jewelry, we are running one healthy, one weapon damage, uh, infused weapon damage, and another infused weapon damage. We are in pin on all the pieces. I would go with probably sturdy or well fitted but I just ain't got around to making more sets getting into our champion points we are running 56 in the warlord 1 in the siphoner 64 in the moon calf 64 in t into tenacity get that wind running we are running 29 tumbling 56 shadow ward 27 and Dublust. 81 Master at Arms. Get that little Butcher and Repost and Retaliation passives. All this actually plays into effect quite often. And my friends were sitting there saying that Repost was in quite a bit of their kill feeds. 56 Thermoturge. 11 Precise Strikes. 39 Piercing. 56 Mighty. We'll get the Weapon Critical and Exploiter Passive, which comes in handy with the two-hander bar. 56 Ironclad, 29 Resistant, 56 Thick Skin, 43 Elemental Defender, 43 Hardy, 43 Quick Recovery, and that's it on the Champion Points. If you have any questions, go ahead and message me on YouTube or, you know, comment below if you like the content, remember to follow, subscribe, and turn those notifications on so that you can have all the content in the palm of your hand ready to go whenever I'm going live. Thank you for tuning in. This is Stormy Knight.